Hey boys and girls, it's Mrs. Walker. Today we're going to talk about using tape diagrams and arrays. So let's take a look at our learning goal. Our learning goal says, I can use arrays and tape diagrams to model division. So that's exactly what we're going to do today. We're going to take what we've already learned about arrays and we're going to add in another step that goes along with tape diagrams and we're going to model division with both of those. And then we're going to take a chance um, or take a second at the end to just kind of compare an array and a tape diagram. So let's jump in and get started with a problem. So the first problem that we have is it says Rosie puts two lemon slices in each um, cup of iced tea. She uses a total of eight slices. How many cups of iced tea does Rosie make? So I want you to take out your dry erase board and I want you to draw an array whatever you think matches that problem or if you want to draw just a picture however you want to do to solve that problem to be able to come up and tell me how many cups of iced tea does Rosie make. So go ahead and pause the video Draw your array or your picture and come up with what you think is the answer for the number of cups of iced tea that Rosie makes. Go ahead and try that now. Okay, so I want to show you what I came up with. I just happened to draw this picture, okay? So when I drew this picture, I'm looking and thinking, okay, so here's my eight lemons. That's one cup. And I did this another one, that's two cups, right? And I'm just going through and breaking apart all of my eight lemons to put them in groups of two for each, because each cup had two lemon slices. So if I look at this, I have one, two, three, four cups. So I think Rosie's gonna need four cups of um, iced tea. I look at this, I wanted to come up with maybe a multiplication equation to match this. So if I use this to match my array that I have over here, I have two lemons in each one. That's this number two for that factor. Um, and then the first factor is going to tell me how many groups that I have. Okay, so I know that there are four. I'm going to fill that in. Four. Now I want to come up with a division sentence that might help me solve this problem. So I had eight, I divided into groups with two in each one, and then I came up with four as my answer. Okay, so that's just kind of a quick problem to get our minds thinking. Now we're gonna take that same problem and we're going to use it with an array and tape diagrams. So for this example, the problem is staying the same and we're trying to find out with our division sentence that we're going to write, the quotient is going to represent the number of groups. Now remember, the quotient is just the answer that we're coming up with, okay? So when I look at this problem, let me read it one more time even though we just did it. It says, Rosie puts two lemon slices in each cup of iced tea. She uses a total of eight slices. How many cups of iced tea does Rosie have? So for this example, the way that I turned this array is I did it as um, um, two by four array. So two rows with four in each one. Now for this one, I wanna think about the columns are showing the number of lemon slices in one cup. And the reason why I switched when I did it this way is because to me it kind of makes a little bit more sense. Cause like I think of a cup, so here's my cup. My cup goes up and down, right? I don't know about you guys, but I don't have too many cups that go side to side. I know if I were to take my cup right now and turn it side to side, everything's going to spill right out. So for me, it made more sense when I was drawing and thinking about this problem to maybe draw it so my columns are representing um, the number of lemon slices for this one. Okay, so what do we not know in this problem? What's the unknown piece of information? We know that there was eight slices, that she used a total of eight slices, and we know that two lemon slices go in one cup. So what's the unknown piece of information? Yeah, it's the number of cups. We don't know how many cups there are, okay? So if we look at this array, how do you think this array might help us solve eight divided by two equals blank? What do you guys think? To me, I kind of think about how we can maybe look at it as we can count the number of columns to find out how many cups there are, okay? So let's kind of jump in and do a little bit more with that. So what's the total, if I look at this picture over here, what's the total number of lemon slices? 
whoops, what if I take this guy? Yeah, okay, there's eight lemon slices, okay? Um, the question asks how many cups of iced tea Rosie makes. Do the cups represent the number of groups or the number of lemon slices in each group? Yeah, it's the number of groups, or in this example, it's the number of cups, okay? So for under this, I want to look at the number of cups. I'm not sure how many that's going to be. Okay, so I want to know the number of cups. We're going to stick this down here because we're still waiting to find that out. Okay, now watch how I show the number of slices in one cup. So I'm going to take this little bracket here and I'm going to put it right here. Okay, because this is representing two slices is what I have here. Okay, there's two slices. Then the next thing that I want to do is... I want to take my marker and I want to divide this up because to me I still am seeing this just this eight. So I'm going to divide this up. There's two in this cup, there's two in this cup, and then there's another two between these ones. So for me, now that I drew those lines, this is a lot more helpful for me to be able to kind of see what the cups look like. Okay, so if I wanted to think about here, as in that's one cup now on its own, okay? And then so on, and here's a second cup, okay? And then here's your third, and then here's your fourth cup, okay? So now that we look at this tape diagram, that's kind of what we're doing with this. We're taking this array and we're turning it into a tape diagram. A tape diagram, think about it, is just a piece of tape, right? You get a long rectangle when you stretch out your piece of tape. And then we're just going to break that apart. And then you have to be able to label your tape diagram to be able to understand what on earth is this thing telling us. So labeling is just doing the things like we did here. Two lemon slices. Eight total lemon slices. And now we're trying to figure out how many cups there are. Okay, so that's just the way to label your tape diagram. But kind of think about how it looks like this guy right here. Looks kind of, whoop looks kind of like a piece of tape, right? And we're just kind of cutting it into pieces as we're doing our tape diagram, okay? All right, so by adding those lines, that helps us to label our array, um, like I said, as the tape diagram. And one column, remember up and down, shows one unit. So in this example, one unit represents um, one cup that has two slices of lemons in each one. Okay, so I labeled the type diagram with the information that I knew and information that I didn't know to be able to help figure out this problem a little bit easier. Okay, so if we think about this problem, we have how many cups? One, two, three, four. So we have a total of four cups that um, Rosie would need to be able to use all of her lemons. Okay. Let's take a look at the division sentence. So we started with eight total lemons here. We divided two in each slice, and that still gave us a total of four cups. Then my other problem that I could use to solve this would be to use some multiplication, right? So I could use four times two now, if I thought about it, is it like almost like turning your head sideways, okay, when you look at it and you had four groups, one, two, three, four, with two in each group. So for this example, we kind of just have to shift our mind instead of our doing it by, a, by rows, we did it by number of columns, okay, to be able to explain these factors. Okay. So hopefully the tape diagram kind of helps you see that a little bit. Let's take a look at another example. However, this time we're going to be uh, solving... Um, a problem where the quotient represents the number of objects in each group. So our last problem was how many groups. This problem is going to be how many go in each group. Okay, so let's check this out. So I had some papers 
took those papers and I put them in seven piles. 21 papers in seven piles. I have to figure out how many papers are in each pile. Okay, so what I want you guys to do um, is we're going to take a look at this uh, together. And if you want to draw along with me, you can. Okay, as we're looking at this problem, though, let's kind of unpack this problem a little bit. So remember again, Ms. Walker puts 21 papers in seven piles. How many papers are in each pile? So what's the unknown piece of information in this pile? Or I'm sorry, in this problem? Yeah, it's the number of objects in each group. We don't know that. We don't know how many papers are in each pile. Okay, so we're going to draw this on our board um, as an array, and then we're going to do where that array, or each column, remember up and down, represents one pile. Okay, so think about how many piles that you need. Okay, and the way that you guys would draw this, okay, is if I were to think about this, I would do one pile, two, three, four, five, six, seven, because that represents how many piles I have. And then I would go back through and I would add one pile to each, or I'm sorry, one paper to each group until I got to 21. So I would go, so I already drew seven because that represents part of my papers. So I would go eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Remember when you're using, using division, you have to use that fair share piece. So you have to go through and do one at a time to be able to make sure that you're equal with it. Because imagine if I just started counting up, I might get all the way up to six over here and then realize, oh man, this pile only here over only has one paper in it. So that's not going to be equal. Because remember when we're doing multiplication and division, everything's got to be equal. Okay, we're not going to have any leftovers with what we're working on. Okay, so let me get rid of all these guys. And I want to bring in this array right here, okay? I think this will be a little bit easier for us to see because it's bigger, okay? So this is like our tape diagram. We're going to label this tape diagram as we're going through, okay? So the first thing that we need to do is how many papers total are there in this? So if I were to draw this um, here, whoop. Oh, not bad. Not my best, but not terribly bad right there. So if I wanted to label this, how many papers are in this, um, were in my piles altogether? Yeah, 21. Okay. Now, the next thing I want to know is how many piles are there? How many piles would we split this up into? What it might be helpful for you guys to do? Let's break this up. Seven piles. So there's one. Now I have two. Now I have three four, five, six, and then here's my seventh one over here. So when you're using your tape diagram, you want to go back in and split those up because that's how you're using your tape diagram. So there's seven piles in my tape diagram, okay? Now, how do we label, let's see, this group right here, right, as the number of papers, okay? And we can find the number of painters now, or papers now because we divided this up into um, groups. So how many papers go in each pile, friends? Three, yeah, one, two, three, okay? All right, so now what I want you guys to do on your dry erase board is I want you to write a multiplication and division equation that shows the unknown for this. So remember we started with seven piles. We don't know how many were in each pile, but it gave us a total of 21. So what does that multiplication sentence look like? And then a division one would be we started with this whole pack of piles, stack of papers, sorry, stack of papers, not stack of piles. <laughs> That doesn't make any sense. I might be losing a little bit today. So thanks for hanging in there with me, friends. So if I have seven, no, 21 papers, I have to say this slow, 21 papers, and I put them into seven piles, how many are in each pile? Figure out that division sentence. Okay, when you guys are ready, click play, and then we'll go over it together. Okay, so let me show you what I came up with. Here's my multiplication problem. I did seven because I had seven piles times I don't know how many were in each pile equals my product of 21. My division problem that I came up with was 
there was 21 papers. I put them into seven piles. Then I had to figure out how many were in each pile. Okay, so hopefully your equations match mine. What I want you guys to think about in this problem, oh, excuse me, friends. I guess I better get on my coffee instead of just my water. <laughs> what are the similarities and differences, differences between the arrays and tape diagrams? What did you guys notice? So the array is where we just started off with the picture. The tape diagram is where we started breaking it apart with the lines and then we added the labels to it. What did you guys notice? Okay, well, some of the things that I noticed was that the tape diagram is a lot like a boxed array. So I'm just taking the array, putting a box around it, and putting some lines in it. They both show that there was seven piles, and there was three piles in each, and there was a total of 21 papers. Okay, so sometimes the labels um, will make it easier to understand a tape diagram, and sometimes it's easier to be able to do that because it kind of helps you unpack the problem and think a little bit more about the problem when you have to add those labels to your tape diagram. Okay. So be thinking about how arrays and tape diagrams can help you when you're trying to find out an unknown in division, whether it's the number of groups or the number um, or the size of the group. Okay. So I hope you guys have fun with your tape diagrams. You guys did an awesome job today. Thank you so much for watching my lesson. I hope you guys have a wonderful and fantastic day. Make sure you hop back on over to the module page to see what you need to complete for your independent practice. Uh, let me know if you have any questions and I hope you guys have a fantastic day and I will see you all soon. Bye friends.